What's up, JW Mafia? It's the Yeti. I am here with my friends. Um, as always, please follow us at Three Irish Boys. Always. Always. Um, so happy you're here. Let me bring in uh, the other man. What's up, JP? How are What's you, buddy? What's going on? Man, uh, we're, we're done. The intro's there. Um, that intro. That pumps me up. Let's let's uh if you don't already follow us, make sure you follow us um at Three Irish Boys. Um we are featured on Wrestling News Source, that is wrestlingnewsource.com where you can find all of your wrestling news updates and information. It's always verified. It's never dirt sheets, it's real wrestling news. Or you can go to wwrlive.com. Right, Nico? Oh. Yeah, oh. WWR Live and WRLive.com oh. himself. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, we're doing this again. It's been too long. What episode is this, by the way? This is three hundred. Um, where are y'all at? Three twenty ish. Man, a lot of shows. Yeah, Dude. man. It's a, um, a lot of content. A lot of blood. There's been that tips. many. We've done that many shows since the comeback. Yeah, I think y'all are at three hundred something. No, it's. I think we could. So I think two hundred something. Maybe I don't know. Yeah, no. Well, we did we did seasons pretty much. So like the three was the season. So I don't know how many actual shows there are. Because like yes. like the wrestling industry, we choose to take like the Thanksgiving and Christmas. Like we yeah. we, we might skip a week here. We might skip a week there because it just you know how it gets. It is what it is. But dude, but, that's cool that you noticed that. Thank you. Like I don't even pay attention to that. I only know it because I put them in when I do the titles. See, I um, have to. He does to... do a lot of shows. <sighs> so do you, though? Yeah, man. I'm up to episode ten. I've made it. Okay. But you've only been back for like two weeks. So, so can, can we just so pop, can we is, can we but... just pop this up there? Like, should we or should we wait? Do it, man. Let's do it. Nah. Well, how was your week, man? How was your week? Like let's just let's just talk. Like I know these people want to call in and be on the show, JP, right? Like, the, do you guys remember doing this like oh yeah a decade ago, a hundred years um, ago? Um, yeah, two thousand five, uh, two thousand six. Yeah, calling Vince Russo and acting like AJ Styles. Not going to show. We thought we were so cool back then. You know uh, what I mean? Yeah, like, so much has changed. Yeah, and but here's the thing: is like, and me and Josh have kind of like dwelled on, not dwelled on this, but talked about this a lot. Is that was really the start of what's out there now? And remember like, how would sh- there be a Conrad if Chris Cash didn't rip a bunch of people off of money? Yeah, I mean, and would look at how far podcasting, wrestling specific, has come to like it was shunned when we were like, you don't do that. Like, don't go talk to those people. Don't interview. Don't do this. Don't do that. And now look at it. Like, it's (laughs) the bump is on the WWE network. Look for real. Granted, they've been local guys. Fire them and just replace them with the three of us. Let's be honest. The bump, bro. (laughs) Just saying, dude. That that would be something, and but it's not out of the realm. There you go. There you go. Oh, Look at, let's, let's talk some wrestling, people. Let's talk some wrestling, guys. Like seriously, pick up the phone. This is like your chance to be water boy for real, but with us. <laughs> people are nervous, man. It says they look at do what guys, we do and they think we're insane. Oh, do you guys remember, like, you were just talking about, like, Cash's show. Like, we could take our show and put it on, up on Fight, you know, and they would approve it immediately and right. it'd be on the same thing. That I think the difference is, is, like, we've always done this independently. We've yep. stayed away. We've done... You guys, what, you guys did that with Total Nonstop Radio because you guys broke away from Cash before the rest of us did and started your own thing, and then we jumped on with you guys, so... Yeah, it was kind of a... We figured out we figured out how to do what he was doing and do me it for and, ourselves. Me and Joe used to see how long it took us to fill up the hard drive on Nico's computer every week. <laughs> so much has changed and since those times of us just being like I mean, we truly were novices just trying to figure out not only podcasting but the internet in itself. And you know, we really did tap into something and it's a damn shame that we didn't stick with it because like you mentioned, yeah. we would be those people right now. We would be the 
The Conrads. The I don't even know who Conrad is, but we'd be the Sean Ross Saps. <laughs> we would be <laughs> Sean Ross Sapp. Like, who the fuck is that guy? <laughs> I don't know. He looks like a Conrad. I mean, Conrad's the dude that co-hosts. Like, yeah, he's the dude that co-hosts Cornets, and um, he does a bunch of them. I think he does Pritchards, too. Hmm. No, I'm not cool with him. I think people are scared. How sad if we put it up and no one actually calls us. We're, we're... It's it's, a, it's hard, dude. You might guys remember when this first started and like Cash would do his show, and I was all intimidated. Like, man, I don't want to call because we I'm got, gonna look stupid. We got I was, watching. huh? Yeah, I mean, there's it, it, here's the deal. Is like we get into the content, somebody's gonna wow. somebody's gonna really wow. disagree. Somebody's really gonna about disagree. About like, if, what about the, y'all? Did you... loyal, man? Where's everyone going? Yeah. We don't. We, we don't. have giveaways and all that crap for these people. You should use one of your um, great crate box, boxing items to give away for your show. That's there's Dingo right there talking about uh, Conrad. He does Bruce, J. I. Eric, and on. Guess who's number ten in Ireland in pro wrestling podcasts? You guys. Us. Nico loves our staff. <laughs> it's just hilarious to me because your name is the Irish Whip. Like, if your name wasn't the Irish Whip, would you be in the top ten? We'd probably be top five. Yeah, definitely. Mm-hmm. We just need just the America Whip. We'd probably that's America Whip. If we, You're we, like, we, <laughs> right behind David Hasselhoff and his uh, his last greatest hit, and then Hulk yeah. Hogan just came out with a yeah. new a rap song that is also playing that. Uh, For real? Yeah, you haven't heard Hulk Hogan's rap song. Let's play it. How ironic is that? You thought I was playing? Oh my god, dude. I was walking down the beach looking for some action. Made that water rap trap station. Saw a girl in trouble, a sticky situation. She wanted me to give her mouth to mouth and just catch up. Oh my god. How much cocaine was he on when he did that? No, brothers. If y'all How want to hear more cocaine? Hulk Hogan, let us know. <laughs> <laughs> oh, JP. Oh, look at this. This is this is good. There it is. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, Dingo, man. Proud. He's got some fans. I clearly could see that. Dingo. I guess there's I guess here's a cool here's a cool uh oh. Here, here we go. Here we go. Catching fire. What we got? Who is this? Welcome to the Irish Whip Podcast. Who's this? Hello? Come on. You can do it. Just be here. Hi. Five, four, three, two. Sorry, you got to go, buddy. Where yeah. you at, man? Try next time. We try. It's difficult. I Call heard. back. Call back. It's, we're, we're here. Call back. Hello? <laughs> Hello? Are you there? All right, let's keep going on the show while people call yeah, it. So, did you guys catch the pay-per-view at all? Yes, I did. I made a point to catch it, JP. A horror show, you mean? Yes. Yeah, that was... I'm trying Which to think part? of something okay. that was as disappointing as that. Which part? Like, be, like the whole thing? Yeah. Okay, when you say that, what are you comparing it to? Like the old extreme rules type matches, the worst wrestling show ever. Mm. And this, top. you thought it was the worst wrestling show you've ever. I thought seen. it was really bad. Because I saw well, I Terry Funk for really Steve Bellino at a okay. at a bar each other one time. So, so put put this in perspective, right, JP? How long oh, have no, you I've been? Seen some, I've seen some bad indie shows. No, 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 no. I'm not even talking indie shows. Let's just leave that out of it, okay? Let's just talk meat, meat and potatoes, structure and backbone. Of a booking when it comes to a pay per view. So, okay, so talking about booking, right? Yep. How do you unbook Rey Mysterio's eye being torn out of his head? Supposedly, like, how do you explain that in six months when his eyes mysteriously, like, his your eye doesn't grow back? <laughs> his eye, his eye will never be revealed again on on wrestling. He's gonna Do wear his eye patch thing, and it'll have he'll be see through. But he's gonna play that out. So you got to remember, Mysterio doesn't have a lot of time left. He doesn't have another five years to play this. It's like this is the end. But <sighs> roll this back a little bit more. Like after the pay per view, when they're doing the promos on Raw, and they're doing the whole Zoom thing. And if you pay attention, this is just me and the mark that I am and how I judge things through the screen. Is I'm watching, and you can see even though he has that mask on and the and the screen over it 
you can see the way the light comes in and the way it reflects. You can see his eye in there. So I'm like, well, that's perfect. Great job, guys. Who's doing the camera work here? Calling back the person that called us. Oh, yes. Uh, yeah. <laughs> What's the area code? Hello? Who's this? This is the Irish Whip. Live. How you doing? Hey, what's going on? Who's this, man? Uh, so this is Maddie. JP knows who I am. Maddie. Oh. So Dude. Maddie is a independent, well, was an independent wrestler from up here. A fucking great dude, and I think after talking to him last night, if he remembers the conversation, he's going to come on in a couple of weeks. Maddie, you are officially the first caller we've ever had. Wow. All right. Well, thank you so much. Back. Now, now this is an occasion. Do you have How a much question for us, or are you just calling to tell us the fuck street off? Street Profits. No, oh, Maddie. I know, right? I, I, right, right? I, I, I you guys. As we're going live because of my dear friend JP and I saw you guys talking about the pay-per-view. You want me to just throw it out there? What did uh, you think about the pay-per-view? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, the rest of it. Yeah. <laughs> so it's done with. This what, was, but hold just, on. Because you saying that means something. Explain to them what wrestling meant to you uh, 24 hours before that pay-per-view, Maddie. 24 hours before that, it was, I mean, the wrestling business was my life since I was four or five years old. And, you know, I went to wrestling school when I was 19. I learned from some of the best and I just, it's been, a, it, it's been building for a couple of years and it's just a uh, last night I watched that, especially that swamp fight. And I was like, you know what? It's over. I, I, I don't think we could put this genie back in the bottle anymore. I'll agree with you. The swamp fight was definitely, um, subpar and way too much storyline and braun Strowman's a clown but i mean you can't take <laughs> other than the ending you cannot take away from that uh oscar sasha banks fight they put on a show there no no and there was some really there was some good wrestling on the show but it, it was just so over complicated when at the end of the day wrestling good guy versus bad guy and we don't have to go yeah. into like it, it, it it, it, it's almost like these are David Lynch movies at this point, whether they're cinematic wrestling or not. Like we have to have this huge twist at the end when you don't have to. That makes total it, sense to me. And Maddie was like the top. Maddie would have been the top baby face in one company on one side of Boston, and then the next night <laughs> go to the other side of Boston and be like this great heel. So I mean, Maddie, when you, when you, you, you I appreciate that. So do you see? Do you see, and this is me saying this, just as like I, you don't know a whole lot about me, but let me paraphrase this. By the my Anthony Green taught me this well, elevator speech. I live in Montana. I've only been to about five live pro wrestling shows my entire life. Everything I consume pro wrestling wise is typically through a screen. So when yeah. I give this opinion, that is exactly where it comes from. So when I see this storytelling. It's I miss where they would tell this. I miss the psychology in the ring instead of on the screen. Have you have you seen um, me on live TV at more events than you've been to live events, dude? Totally. <laughs> I've seen JP at more live events than I've seen you. I mean, you between the two of you, like it's a lifetime. It's it's, dude. I get so jealous when. I see you guys like consuming this in person and f like fucking fist bumping Matt Riddle right there. Like you get a bro bump, man. That's bullshit. And he's there watching <laughs> whoever at Beyond Wrestling whenever he wants to go watch him. He he can he could probably hopscotch over there. And Maddie's actually wrestling. Yeah, yeah. yeah. The, Maddie's been in there with some of the best. <laughs> oh, thanks, JP. Yeah, that, I, you know, like I wor I've worked with Eddie Edwards. Eddie Edwards is one of my one of my best friends. Uh, uh, you know, I've 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 seen Bobby Fish uh, uh, oh, quite yeah. a few times. Shade a locker room with him. Like I've seen and watched all these guys, and I've gotten all this advice. And like I watch wrestling now, and it's like it's like almost everyone's forgotten what they learned. Now it's just this new thing that I just can't get on board with. And maybe I'm just old man yelling at the sky at 36 years old. Who the hell knows? <laughs> but man, even I, I'm wishing for wrestling from ten years ago, <laughs> and it wasn't that great. D Maddie, do you watch AEW? Just curious. Uh so 
I did give it a shot. Uh, at first, I didn't like it. And then right before COVID hit, the new year, I thought they were putting on some great wrestling shows. And then right after COVID hit, they went right back to the hokey jokey stuff that everyone was calling them out for. And yeah, uh, last week, especially with Jericho talking about the demographics, I'm like, who are you going to get besides hardcore wrestling fans talking about stuff like that? It's, it's just it, like I'm lost. I'm lost, and I don't know how this can be fixed. I mean, I know how it can be fixed, but I don't know who's going to fix it. Do you got to burn the whole house down at this point and start over? Right. It's like you find the spy. You, you, you're, you know, you, your girlfriend or wife found the spider, and now you got to burn the whole house down because of it. We're at that point, I think. And I'm with you. Like I, I liked a lot of the like. I call them the highly produced matches, like the the fucking shit on the roof and the um, the John Cena match with Bray Wyatt. But I did, I couldn't stand what they did last night. I liked, I liked the Boneyard match. I loved it, but I also liked that all the cool. movies. So you know. And did what did you think of the John Cena Bray Wyatt was a miss, or did you think that one worked well? That was a huge miss, but I think what they could have done with that. Was I think they could have made that a vignette on the Friday night SmackDown before WrestleMania, and then had the match. I think, yeah. I think that could have been a really interesting way to make that like the vignette for their feud, and I think that would have been a hit. But as a match, no, nah, I, I I just I don't know. I I couldn't get behind it. Hey, Maddie, let me ask you this question. Um, cause I'm going to use you and abuse you while we have you. Is uh, sure. Why is it? For somebody like me, why do I prefer to why why do I prefer SmackDown over Raw, which has never happened? Like in my history, like when it was time when WCW happened, like I chose sides. That's why I could I will never ever yep. ever win at any trivia game, is because I was one of those attitude kids <laughs> that threw up the middle finger and said I'm sticking solid here and I'm a DX guy. I mean I got a huge DX tattoo on my <laughs> forearm, so. I mean, when I ask that, I was like, why is it so hard for me now when I look at that brand and go, oh, I'd rather be watching SmackDown? I, I think with SmackDown, it's, it's uh, A, the runtime, um, and B, there, there is kind of a clear vision on SmackDown, whereas when Heyman was running Raw, it looked like, you know, he was trying to push the guys he would push, and then Vince would be like, yeah, well, I don't see it, pal. That's what uh, that's what I think. God knows if that's true. And plus, it's three hours. Three hours of anything besides football is is uh, a tough sit. Um, so I think that's. I don't want to talk. I don't want to talk football with you today. <laughs> <laughs> Maddie got a new jersey but, uh, today. Do you want to? I think that's maybe uh, SmackDown. It needs like that. That extra hour. That's a that's a long. I mean, wrestling pay per views. That's when you were like, "All right, well, we're going to sit down. We're getting three hours of this." And when Raw went to three hours, I don't yeah. think anyone was ready for that. Now they get this weird thing where all these matches start slow. Every match has two commercial breaks. SmackDown's a little more palatable because it's two hours and it's a little bit quicker. Even if the booking still isn't as good, and that's just my two cents. Uh, Matt, you like I've told you this a hundred times. Like you're one of the best minds I know for this stuff. So, well, I learned from the best, and yeah. I, I had you around always. So you know, come on, you know, so I, I think that goes. I think right. that's the other way around, Matt. <laughs> Hey man, he, J, JP doesn't ever toot his own horn. Like he doesn't. He he always downplays, just. Like this, the, how he understands, and he doesn't expose things to me because I would. He knows that I would f slit him from ear to ear because there's a lot of stuff I don't want to know, like ever, ever, ever <laughs> about it what we call it. pro wrestling because it would ruin it for me. It would. Um, right. So I mean, when you talk about, I mean, when you say you learn from the best, are you including JP in that? No. Uh, yeah. Well, no. Uh, because JP would be someone that who I didn't know it first. When uh, I don't, I'll name drop. When I was working for New England, who's no longer with us, unfortunately, got me in any seat up. I didn't know JP from Holden Wall. And 
we became friends just talking about wrestling and I would just from those conversations I would know like when I was done with a match or a promo I could go to JP and ask him what did you think about this and get an honest opinion and that to me in a business where a lot of people will look you in the eye <laughs> and completely and totally but to put you down um that's a that's a huge that's a huge thing and you know if he doesn't want to put himself over i'll put him over i, I really like having jp around just just for his opinion i appreciate <laughs> that maddie i'm a good drinking buddy too i think he's just a pure asshole yeah so yeah that's true. a lot of times you don't remember so that's I, probably why i put him over I got, so, like, he I probably gave me some, uh, shitty advice and i just remember <laughs> no man i've listen i've seen you do so much that other people could i've seen you play other literally play other people and a, a lot of people couldn't pull that off so hey listen i was a five foot six back kid that shouldn't have been any good at this and i i think i did all right and i made a lot of good friends out of it so and he's one of them so. nice glad to, i'm proud of that and Thank Maddie, you, Maddie. Maddie. I appreciate Maddie, you. And we Maddie, yeah, we will get you on because there's some stories I want to talk to you about. Yeah, absolutely. Hey, anytime. And it was, it was, it was really nice talking to all you guys. I, I saw the JP went live and I saw the number up there and I was like, yeah, it's good. Right. <laughs> Maddie, so tell, just for shits and giggles, tell them what jersey you got today. Uh-oh, what'd you get? Wait, what happened, JP? Tell what them, them what jersey you got today or you got recently. Oh God! Are they gonna bury me? So no, uh, they're gonna I, love you. Dad, I'm gonna bury you. Yeah, my my dad's not good at math. My birthday's in a month, and uh, he sent me a. Uh, he's he's up in Westford. I'm in Revere in Massachusetts, so that's a good hour and change away. And uh, uh, he sent me a Tom Brady Buccaneers away jersey for nice. my birthday. Oh yeah, at a boy. <laughs> <laughs> Atta boy. Hey, he's a month off, but I'll take sure. That's a nice jersey, yeah. actually. And I guess they emailed him and said the jersey was here. He was like, Happy birthday. And I'm like, Yep, a month and four days, uh, <laughs> a month and four days from now. But hey, we'll we'll take it anyway, Fred. Good job. At least he's not a month and four days late. Maddie is such a like. I love Maddie. Honestly, he's one of my like really. All right, guys, you heard enough from me. Why don't you uh, shit all over this show? And I'll, Thanks, I'll Maddie, thank you for calling in. We appreciate it. <laughs> Call in number one, the first of many. We appreciate it, Maddie. We, uh, we got up in our cherry. Look at that. We got Gotti in the galaxy in the um in the chat room too. That's a dude that toured with WWE for a while. Yeah, yeah. So it's big Paul daddy. Rome. He's partnered up with Paul Roma down there and uh, Mario Mancini down with Paradise yeah. Alley Pro Wrestling. So, hanging out, having a good time. Mario's uh, the, all, all good dudes. There you go, Mario and the Chaos Fan Irish Whip. Thanks, guys. Yeah, yeah it, I, I'm telling you, man, that 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 Mario Mancini interview. Yeah, like some of these that we've done, some of these interviews that we've like Pillman Junior. Before he was Pillman yeah. Jr., he wanted to be Brian Pillman, Pillman II. II. <laughs> like some of this stuff before, you know, that was right after he um, won or uh, competed for the X Division belt against um, Matt Seidel. He just did AEW Doc, too. Yeah, yeah. It's he, uh, he, um, he's a fan, believe it or not. But there's he, some of the, uh, some of the interviews, like, Pillman back then, you didn't know what you were going to get, and that was a great interview. Mario Mancini, I had no idea what was going to come out of that, and it was a good into a good interview. Um, Paul Richard, the, uh, yeah, the, man. Um, the I knew referee gonna, from ECW. I knew what was going to happen with that one, though. Just yeah. knowing Paul, so we in that episode we talked all about CTE and yeah. chair shots to the head and why professional wrestling has steered away from that. And the damage that it's done to people's heads, uh, Chris Benoit being one of them, um, a lot of other ones. Um, so, yeah, yeah. I, w yeah. I mean, what else? Uh, that member when Flip uh, said 
talked to us and waited for us to come on and to yeah. let everybody know that he signed his exclusive Ring of Honor contract and yes. did it on the show. Like, there's just so much. So when people say that, um, that's pretty cool that people, like, I don't even listen to our our show. No. Man, I'm, I'm bad because I'm, I'm listening to Nico. I'm listening to Rucker on right. Boot to the Face. I'm listening to Talkamania. Like, I'm... I'm spending my time doing that stuff. I don't want to have to listen to us. I mean, we just do this. Like this is, it's just natural for us. It's, <laughs> and I don't know, man. I don't know. I don't know. There's Amber O'Neill. Like, yeah. yeah and you know, become a friend. Yeah. A I huge... only go back to listen and see if we sound good. And that's yeah. it. I, I don't care about the content. I just want to hear how we sound. If we sound yeah. okay, then I'm like, all right. Perfect. Yeah. Same. Yeah. Cause we already, I, we already know we had the conversation. We're done. Like, but other right. people like, I, I just appreciate the I feel fact like this that comes up every show. <laughs> what? I feel like this comes up every show. Your Mount Rushmore of your shows. But he's actually asking for our Mount Rushmore oh, of us. dude. Oh, the Mount Rushmore of shows. Yeah, that's hard. Oh, all right, so if we go way back, and this is one all three of There's us not were on four good shows. Let's be honest. Mm. Can we co- can we combine side projects in this? I think the Vince Russo one. The yeah. Colin, Colin Russo. To when we AJ called in, <laughs> what was like that we kid's talked name? about that. Yeah, so that was Colin Vince Russo and letting him. That, you know, we had a kid that sounded just like AJ Styles and like call identical. up and tell him that. Yeah, I'm done. Fuck TNA. I quit. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not showing up for the paper. Um, that's a good I think one. for me, Chris Canyon. Yeah, that's personal for you. That was that yeah. was Chris Canyon was coming out on the so show. What's that? You've interviewed so many people. <sighs> it's wow. ridiculous, man. Well, we back then back it was it. like every week, and we had a we had a relationship with T. Me and Joe had like a pretty good relationship with TNA until um, Ross Foreman took over, and now we're getting that relationship back again fifteen years later. Ironically, yeah. Uh, but there used I think to be a girl mine... that did it that liked me and Joe because we sent her flowers after she gave us our first guest. Here's my here's my dilemma, right? You guys know I'm a huge Drew Gulak fan, right? Uh, yeah. Also a huge Corrosion of Conformity fan. So it's a tie between interviewing Reed Mullins and Drew Gulak back when he was still going to Drexel and hanging out at CZW. That was awesome, man. What about the one you guys did where, um, was it Acha? We did not have any of our videos from, our audio from 20, 2000, whatever. We, okay, here's... The, Here's the, here's what you have to do is you have to you have to get on the phone or email or Facebook my ex wife and see <laughs> if she still has that hard drive that has Jimmy Hart and like yeah, all of it like Jimmy all Hart. of it. Um, Dude, I would kill to hear my interview with SoCal Val at 22 oh, yeah. years old. I, I mean, know. fuck, I'm 40, <laughs> dude. This is insane. Like, uh, I'll, I'll I will reach out. I would kill I will, for that shit. Because I, I was so I, nervous and I was so shitty. Like now, I, it's oh, we're just totally different creatures now. It's oh, crazy. I remember pissing off Petey Williams. Oh, that was on your show. Yeah, he um he kept saying a like the stereotypical Canadian a. So I started saying it. <laughs> <laughs> For us, like I Tunku Amir, so Tunku cool. Amir making yeah. Tunku Amir yeah, making the, JP say sir for half an hour. Those Chikara um, interviews were great. And, frantic. Uh, uh, he wants to, his. Uh, he's got something going on. So Wheeler Yuda in the morning. Yeah. Oh, did you see what I tagged you in on on Twitter today? Huh. Wheeler Yuda's doing his mask as a COVID mask. Really? I tagged you on Twitter. He's selling them for fifteen dollars. I need to buy his and Green Ants. <laughs> I saw that and I tagged you once. I saw it. <laughs> uh what's up Ashton? That's uh that's uh my nephew Zeron's boy right there. That's a, that's the unit, a good guy. The third that's Irish boy. boy actually is not me. I'm the Greek. There's two yeah. Irish boys and yeah. there's another the Greek. Irish boy. You're I, the Greek Greek. I met JP and I met Yeti. Yeti reached out to me through freaking MySpace in two thousand and two or two thousand and three when I worked at TNA Wrestling. And yeah. that introduced me to JP. And I truly was the man behind the curtain because I had all the insiders of everything yeah. that was happening and all the mad. I'd be like, holy shit. I'd like text or I'd call Yeti. I'd be like, oh my God, Sting's here. Like, <laughs> you T9 me on your brick Nokia. 
Yeah, <laughs> dude, like I, would, I would write you on my Motorola Razor texting you saying Kurt Angle just showed up. So, I mean, I've known these yeah. dudes for like 15 years, but, you know, life gets in the way. They continued with their show. I basically gave up on all this and, and went about my life. And we've, you know, we've reconvened on Twitter, really brought us back together the last, I don't know, two or three years ago. And now, you know, Facebook and everything. We're, we're right back where we started. Yeah, let's let's pop that back up there just in case somebody else wants to call in. Let's. Yeah, uh, was, I was so happy that was Maddie. Let's take a Daddy, break. This is an easy answer for me. Let me just answer this real quick. My yeah, yeah, do it, do it, do it. In TNA was my very last day there. I'll never forget it. I saw Kurt Angle walk in. I was like, holy shit, Kurt Angle's here. And it was my last day. And I sat there literally five feet from the ring. And I watched him headbutt Samoa Joe and then go down. That was brutal. And, that rumble. and I, that's number one. Number two for me, I got the, uh, I saw Abyss and Sabu in a barbed wire, some kind of match. Uh, <laughs> and it was absolutely insane. And I actually hung out with Abyss afterwards at the Ale House. And he had one of the biggest gashes in his arm I've ever seen in my entire life. And he didn't even care. That's the one that cut his tattoo. He's a fucking monster. He, truly, like, he did but not Abyss care. Was he cool. was like, yeah, let's just get some Jaeger. We'll be fine. I was like, oh, my God, do you need to go to the hospital? So. Every time I met Abyss at a show, like he knew me and he knew the kids I traveled with because, you know, I was traveling with one of the referees and usually a wrestler or, you know, a ring announcer. And he'd just be like, oh, there's my Boston boys. Oh, he's Always the nicest dude show. in the entire world. No doubt about it. Chris Parks. Yeah. I mean, awesome, awesome dude. He's with WWE now, so I'm really happy. Yeah. For him. Yeah. That's who is well, your Mount, Rush, Mount Rushmore of wrestlers all time? That's the. Yeah, that one. That's the question I was saying that comes well, every time. We'll do that one next. We got a we got a brand, folks. We got to take a break, and we got a brand, right? Brand it out. Forget about moose too. No chance. That's what you got. Timber's creeping on me. Hmm. <laughs> You're one of the most supportive girls in the world. Hey, girl, how you doing? I do. I do. I'm, I'm very lucky, very blessed to have that. Like she lets you buy action figures. She buys action figures for you. <laughs> Dude, she yeah, she buys action. She she just hung them all up on the wall. You know, not Literally. every girl, not every girl hangs. Every dog has figures. their day, right, Josh? Yeah. Now you, get, yeah. Don't you guys? You, you, you got guys, like uh, Yeah, I'm 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 I'm, I'm fortunate. Yes. JP's Let's boyfriend get, never calls in for him. He's no. he's been left out. I know. Three two one three two eight seven one five eight. I think people should write that down if you are. We forget now that we do this in uh, video do not format. Call me after the show, give <laughs> <laughs> it out. So like forty thousand people are about to start blowing up your so phone. Call me, Joe. <laughs> no, I, it's a Google number. I will turn it off after the show. But yeah, <laughs> call me. Go at midnight. <laughs> My wife's gonna be like, "Who the f is that?" Yeah. Who's calling oh, you from Australia? So any, listen, I know some females on my feed listen to this. Street any prophets. female that's on my that's listening to this right now, oh, call stop. Nico at two in the morning. <laughs> <laughs> hey, how you doing? I don't know what the hell you're thinking right now. Yeah. <laughs> we had to mute that shit. Let's let's talk about the question that was posed uh, before we went to break by Frankie Ward. Is what's up, Frankie? I can't believe you're doing what you're doing, not inviting your bros. Who's your Mount Rushmore of wrestlers all time? All three of us. Like I answer this different every time, and yeah. I probably will again today. 
I honestly, like, I'm not bullshitting. I'll probably say that for the rest of my life. I think I might try to do it every time without naming any of the same wrestlers. Uh-oh. We got a caller. Oh, caller. Caller, what's your name? <laughs> it's probably well, a... Hey, caller. Th- thanks for hey. calling the Irish Whip. <laughs> you can't link the call. We're going to call you right back. I don't know why the call isn't linking. But it works when you call them, which is that's because we that's because TIW on my phone and not my roadcast. Okay, I know what I'm doing. The Guardian of Chaos. This is him. Guardian of Chaos. Chaos. Oh, oh, what's up, what's man. going on, Big Daddy? Oh, hold on, guys. Are you are you telling me that I am live on the air with the Irish Whip podcast? That, that is, is exactly what I'm telling you, Big Correct. Daddy. Come on, no. <laughs> it's so what weird calling another guy up? Big Daddy. By the way. Only well, if you're in prison. Uh, right now, I, I'd like to consider myself medium daddy. I went from 330 medium pounds daddy. down to a lean, train, uh, lean, mean, trim, 215. Yes, yeah, from 330 to 215. That's amazing, dude. Good job, man. Well, the reason why I want to call is, number one, that I find your guys' uh, show to be very entertaining, very informative, and you guys have a connection to the business, and I consider you guys insiders. So if I'm going to listen to anyone, uh, it's going to be people that know the business. So that's why, number one, I'm calling in to, to, to hear the three of you. Uh, a lot of knowledge. Uh, and I could learn something because I'm always trying to learn, even at my age. Thank you very much. Appreciate that. Appreciate it very much. And the first time I listened to your guys' show, believe it or not, was when my co-host uh, from Mario. the Mario Bayas show was on. And uh, you know that Mario worked in the WWE from yes. 84 to 92. Uh, he was the debut match from everybody from The Undertaker to Jim DeAnvil Nightheart to Ted DiBiase, Big Bully Busick. I mean, it's well documented. Yeah. And uh, I found his interview with you guys riveting, to be quite honest. And you said you didn't know what you were going to get. Give me your thoughts of interviewing uh, Mario, who just was recently voted as one of the top 10 jobbers of all time in pro wrestling history. <laughs> That's amazing. Is that right? Here's, I yeah. guess, here, here's how I sum that up. Yeah, they is, won't put them in the fucking encyclopedia. Right. No. Nope. three different right. encyclopedias, big man. Here's how, I guess, here's how I relate that is that um, JP said it to me the best is I always paid attention to the big names, like the guys that I, yeah. I knew and I saw. But like he put it, I think better than anybody could ever put it, whether you call it talent enhancement or jobber or the other guy, is that when that other guy or that talent enhancement or that jobber was in the ring at that point in time, you knew it was going to be a good match. And that was what JP, like that. And when you say you learn new things, I did. Like that was just this year. I was like, shit, I've never thought about it that way. But I like knew when those names came up, I'm like, shit, we're going to see something good now. That was lot. It was right before. It was this time last year, actually, because it was right before Joe Bruins, uh, the Hall of Fame, the New England Pro Wrestling Hall of Fame, which would have been this past weekend. Yep, absolutely. You are correct about that, guys. And uh, last year, I was blessed and fortunate enough myself to be inducted into the class of 2019 New England Pro Wrestling Hall of Fame. So I was there last year, and for Fan Fest Seven, uh, Joe Bruin really does an unbelievable yeah. job of with the New England Pro Wrestling Hall of Fame. He has some legendary names uh, in his Hall of Fame. So that was probably the biggest honor of my career uh, last year to be inducted. And you know what? Those legends will all go to bat for Joe. Jimmy Valiant will go to bat for Joe all day, every day. As will most of the guys that he's brought in. Now, I'm sorry. How how cool is that? uh, (laughs) I'm sorry, guys. Go ahead. How cool was that that the all four horsemen were there just like hanging out, taking pictures with fans? And well, the the, the good thing about that, uh, and again, for me personally, being in the career for, for so long and being blessed and fortunate enough to, to have many stars allow me to work with them, uh, to be there last year with Arn Anderson and, and Tully Blanchard and, and Barry Windham and, and, and Paul Roma and JJ Dillon. And to have dinner with those guys uh, the night of the induction and the legendary Samoan dynasty and Duke the Drumster, Dumpster yeah. Trosi and Jimmy Valiant uh, couldn't have been more kind and, and what a guy Jimmy Valiant is. Uh, so 
to be there and have those guys listen to your speech and have dinner with them, it really was an honor. And you're right, Joe Bruin treats the talent uh, unbelievable. And that's why his Fan Fest and Hall of Fame is, is so successful. Yeah. Every year. Now, tell us about your podcast and tell us about the, because you're one of the trainers at the school too, correct? Well, I, I do a lot of their uh, promo training classes. I do all their broadcasting and color commentary. What Paradise Alley Pro Wrestling is, it, it's a group here in Connecticut in the legendary historical WWF territory of New Haven County. And it's run by former WWE, WCW legend. And that would be pretty Paul Roma. I don't have to read the resume. Four horsemen, power and glory, pretty wonderful young stallions, perhaps one of the most underrated wrestlers in, in WWE, WWF history. He's our head trainer at Paradise Alley. That's... Wow. Yeah, Did Paul I Roma mean... have the essence spray? That was Paul Roma, right? No. <laughs> yes, it was. And if you remember, yeah, uh, dude. he was also on the dating game back in the day. Yes. In dude, in yes. He sprayed me <laughs> as a kid. I was maybe, I don't even know, under un, under 10, 15, I was young, and he, he sprayed me with that shit. He walked by, it was like, <laughs> and it like, it was, it, well, sm it, it was smelled like a <laughs> Nico, it was actually Rick, Rick Martel, the model Martel. But Roma used it too, but Martel the model. Martel got me with it. Yeah, okay, I was going to say. <laughs> I remember that. And, and our other trainers, and, and you guys know this, our other trainers are four, three other guys. We call them the Paradise Four. Obviously, we know Roma's credentials. But then there's Mario Mancini. Again, and, and yeah. people say jobbers. He doesn't like to use enhancement talent. Yeah. And I agree with that. Being a jobber in the 70s and 80s, even into the 90s in the WWE, WWF, is a term that is an honor. I don't know what the new century and the new generation, they, they look at it as an insult. But to be voted top three in the WWF and then top 10 all time, that means your job, and you guys are very talented, you're in the business, you're in the know. That means you go in there and you make it easy for everybody else. You make everybody else look good. That's what you're best at. You don't survive being a jobber in that era for that long unless you know how to work. So Mario is also one of the trainers, along with Paul Perez, who was in the WWE in the late 80s and early 90s. He was Mario's tag team partner. And then there's this six foot six, 400 pound Big Dave Paradise. Now, all four of these men worked under the guidance of Vince McMahon in the Crockett's in the WWE and WCW. That's what Paradise Alley does. Not better than any other training facility. Hey, listen, right here in, in Connecticut, we have Team 3D Academy with the Dudley Boys. I mean, it's a phenomenal school. Can't stand by the way, have... Dudley. <laughs> Cool. <laughs> well, I've been in the ring with both of them a couple of times. I didn't like it. I took the what's up. It wasn't one of my finer moments. But <laughs> oh, that's cool, though. Yeah. <laughs> I guess, Nico. I guess it's cool. Um, the one thing that Paradise Alley does more than anything besides teaching young men and women how to wrestle, how to grapple, how to make it in this business like our number one student, who is now a big star in MLW. He's the Caribbean heavyweight champion. And that would be Richard Holiday from the dynasty. He was our first student. Since then, uh, what we do at Paradise Alley is we mentor young men and women, not only to be wrestlers and make a living like Richard Holiday, but to have morals, values, not to judge anybody and learn how to carry yourself in life, much less the wrestling business. That's what I could say about Paradise Alley, guys. That's, and now, you did you do a tour of the, with the WWF at one point, too? Am I correct in that? Uh, the one thing that I never did was sign a contract with the WWF. I've uh, been in the ring with 40 or 50 Hall of Famers, every young okay. lion you could think of, and you were talking about. Uh, I see Now, guys, here's the misnomer. I trained to be a pro wrestler, but I was a pro wrestling manager for 30 years. Uh, I had everybody in my stable from Yokozuna to Rikishi to Umaga, uh, Sergeant Slaughter, King Kong Bundy. I'm not going to go through the list, but just like with you guys and your experience, we can go on all night. 30 or 40 Hall of Famers. I've learned from the best. Gary Hart, Jim Cornette, Captain Lou Albano, 
those are the men, Bill Alfonso, Joel Gertner, those are the men that I studied under for the last 35 years. And that's where I made my way in the business. I was a commentator and manager that took the big bumps at the end, a la Freddie Blassie, Captain Lou. And that's how I made my way through as the guardian of chaos, because I'm going to be honest with you, gentlemen. Pro wrestling was the toughest thing I've ever done in my life. I was trained by Dr. D. David Schultz as a bounty mm. hunter. I worked behind the walls for 25 years. I was a bodyguard from everybody from Madonna to Metallica to LL Cool J. Awesome. So I could take care of myself. The toughest thing I ever did was try to become a professional wrestler. And back in the 80s, when I went to the legendary Quest facility here in Connecticut in the shadows of Titan Towers with tough Tony Altamori from the Sicilians and Mario was the trainer. It was the toughest thing I ever did and I walked out of that school at that time with my tail between my legs. <laughs> uh, be all honest, this is a shoot. That's incredible. Well, the thing is, is that it's that's real though because if you watch 30 for 30, ESPN's 30 for 30 and you realize how much of a quitter Ric Flair was and how like this question relates is like I think Ric Flair will always be one of my top three in a Mount Rushmore, I think he'll always be consistent. But after that, because, well, I guess I could throw Cena in there because those are the two that really have influenced, you know, my perception of what pro wrestling is. So I, I, I don't know. That's, well, Rick, that's Rick where Blair, I'm at. Without, without a doubt, uh, anyone who, who in this industry as an insider, uh, a smart, the dirt sheets, a fan, uh, a grappler yourself, a talent, Ric Flair, in my opinion, is, is the pinnacle. I, I've said that, you know, I'm, I'm 56 years old. I'm going to be 57 years old. I still have the passion for this business of when I was seven years old in the 70s and doing backyard wrestling long before anybody ever thought about it. Mm. But if you don't agree uh, in this business that Ric Flair was probably the pinnacle for our generation, ah. then, then you really don't understand the business, to be quite honest with you. Yeah, I... Th- the flair is definitely fucking awesome. You I know why I say that? You know why he will always be there? Because the motherfucker is still working. Like, he right. is literally still in Florida, at the Performance Center, in that age group that is uh, at risk with this COVID-19. And I mean, that he, he's motherfucker, he's two, still rolling the dice. Huh? Right. He's kicked out at two multiple times in the last couple of years. <laughs> Dude. Yeah, <laughs> like yeah, literally. Listen, he kicked out in the seventies in the, in that plane accident. So yeah, he's been kicking out forever. his whole life. Right. Now I, I want to ask you guys a question because I respect your opinion, and I, you know, and even though I'm an old school guy and, and I appreciate the eighties, that's that's my era and Paradise Alley trainers area. We keep it old school, but I want to ask you guys something that really caught my eye. Uh, in this new generation is, is female grappling. And did you guys, because I, they, I bring her up because she was our former uh, Divas champion. That's what it was called at the time, the Paradise Valley Divas champion. What did, and that was Diona Perrazzo. What oh, did you God. guys think of Perrazzo and Jordan Grace the other night? Because the lockup was some of the best I've ever seen on male Virtuosa. or female grappler. And you know what it is with both of those two girls? It's believable. You know, I'm really well, shocked that, that pro- I'm shocked that she didn't make it to NXT because she had the fan base, she had the the popularity. I think it boils down to physically she doesn't have a body that's good enough for Vince McMahon, and that's sad. Dude, that's 100% correct. And here's here's the other part of it is that Vince is the collector. He's the collector. If he sees somebody on the market that he knows is a threat, what's the easiest way to get rid of a threat? Everybody's got their price, right? I want to say I, I, I signed on. I, I got a WWE contract. I'm going to the Performance Center. I got a guaranteed salary of $60,000. Holy shit. What did I get into? Right? Mm-hmm. So it's one of two things well, for me. I, this, is, this is why I watch you guys because you have valid information about the past and the present. You're 100% right Thank when you, you say that. Diona didn't have the look, doesn't have the Trish Stratus, the Sable. Uh, the Bellas, uh, uh, you know, Sasha, she doesn't have that traditional look, Charlotte, there that, that Vince is looking for. And so that's number one. So that's bingo. And Nico, you hit it. I'm not sure if you said this. I also think she had a reputation 
for being a little cantankerous or a little arrogant. Now, I, I've had a chance to meet her and have her work for us. She was humble and polite. So where she gets the reputation, you know, I have a lot of sources. I, I heard that maybe along the lines of a Tessa, although not the slurs that Tessa supposedly or allegedly made, I heard that people thought Deanna was a little arrogant and cocky, and I couldn't disagree more. I guess that's the thing is that when it when the when the rubber meets the road, you either fit into the WWE mold or you don't. If you don't fit into that mold, or if they can't mold you into what they want you to be, or if you're resistant to that, then they're not going to waste their time. They will just shove you to the side until your contract expires. Then know they have another ninety to hundred days till you sit on the shelf, and at that point in time, you know it's right. it's difficult because like Deanna Perazzo is one of those females like a, a year even two years ago was like you know wrestle circus i think is the first place that i saw her and i was like wow i mean i, I can her and jordan grace like timber said thanks hun is they i mean they sell it they can sell it all day long well, right? not, not only that i mean impact has uh, has really uh, captured everybody here during this pandemic over the last week or two and they really made a buzz and they, they, I think they followed up on it tonight with impact on access. Now, what they have is a strong, strong women's division. I mean, uh, to me, one of the best female grapplers in the country, perhaps the world, is, is another lady, Taya Valkyrie. And, and I just think that she's an unbelievable talent. I'll even throw in Madison Rain, who has come a long way, and let's go back to the lovely people, whether it be Velvet Sky and and, and her partner Angelina Love. I mean, TNA has always had a great women's division, and I'm sure Nico, you can attest to that. Of course. And, and I just think that their their roster is pretty good. That here we are on a Tuesday night, and we're not talking AEW, we're not talking Monday Night Raw or NXT. We're talking about Impact. That says a lot in a short period of time of where that product has gone and hopefully I guess there are much needed viable alternatives in this industry. And I don't care whether it's ring of honor, MLW impact NWA, and hopefully Billy brings them back. New Japan has been phenomenal. It's not just, and I say this ad nauseum to every show that I'm on. It's not just the WWE and obviously AEW now and all these other organizations. If we ever get past this pandemic, there is no better time to be in this fucking industry as a fan or as talent than there is right now. Before this pandemic hit, the world was exploding. And then now look what Tony Khan and Cody Rhodes are doing. They're bringing in an independent stars. They're, they're putting that out now and starting to bring in yes. guys. So independent wrestling is on the forefront. Look at what Busted Open Radio is doing. Get yourself over Monday. I've heard everybody on there from JT Dunn to AR Fox. I mean, it's a great concept during this time. If you're a podcaster, if you're a talent, if you're a commentator, if you're a grappler, if you're anybody, a promoter, a company, and you're not taking advantage, and I said it at Mario's Monday Night Class, not at Paradise Alley, to all the young students. If you're not taking advantage of this pandemic to build and grow your character and work on your problems and work on your psychology and your uh, storytelling and the emotional investment, then you're missing the fucking boat right now and you're wasting valuable time. Nailed it. Nailed it right on the head. You know, so I, I just I just wanted to call in and, and talk to you guys because I don't yeah. catch it all the time, but when I do, I always find it an interesting listen and I don't find myself changing the channel. So, uh, you know, no, we truly and, uh, appreciate it. Yeah. This was a great conversation. So with that being said, I mean, you guys are known. There's a lot of competition out there. Everybody and their brother and their mother got a fucking podcast. <laughs> uh, bring something different to the table. And that's what I say about the Mario Chaos show. We're no fucking better than anybody else. We're we, not. We all suck. Let's We're be different. honest. <laughs> <laughs> no, but so you guys have, you guys yeah, have sort of a different experience than some of the other podcasts that have wrestlers on them because like it's like Mario was never the top guy. Mario was the guy that made the top guy the top guy. So there's a different level Bingo. there. You know what I mean? Well, and plus let, let's not forget my experience because uh, we don't talk a oh. lot of, of me. Mario's the one that stirs the drink on our podcast. But I've been in this business for over yeah. 30 years. 
I've worked for every company from the AWA to the NWA to all the territories to the North American Wrestling Alliance, which, which is making a huge comeback. Northeast Wrestling, which is a legendary company in this. Yeah. Ooh. Oh, we lost him. We lost Nico, who had him. <laughs> <laughs> He's glitching out. Stop, stop removing me. I do whatever, dude. Did you hear him while I was off? No. no. Him, okay, sorry, man. We were having an issue where you got removed. I think me and Josh both kept trying to add me go back. And I was trying to go back. Awesome, man. Thank you. I have a couple more people calling, so let do we want to get let me get to their calls. Thank you so much for calling. I really appreciate it. I greatly appreciate it, man. I'll, Thanks I'll a lot. Thank you. Right. Thank you. We want to take this other person that call. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Production at its best. So go away. He, come back. Go away. Come back. Go away. Come back. <laughs> <laughs> Leaving it in too. I don't add a video. Oh. Maybe I am insane. Maybe I am insane. And maybe it's time for you to find out. <laughs> What's up, man? Irish Whip. Thanks for calling. Who do we got on the phone? It's Rucker. What's up, dude? Oh, Jesus Christ. <laughs> yeah. The champ oh. is here. The champ. Oh, it's good. Uh, the champ is here. What's going on, can buddy? I, can I tell everyone how I came in second place in the trivia contest? <laughs> you can tell everybody whatever you want, Dave. <laughs> oh, I was getting some text messages from someone you know today saying that my shit talking was a lot better than yours, though. How much did you pay him to tell you that? Uh, I didn't have to pay Marty anything to tell me that. Oh, Marty's full of shit. How you guys doing? You All right, you? Show? We're good, man. We're taking phone calls for the first time. We're trying it out. Yeah, it's, I like it. It's a, it's a new... It's. I mean, we're 57 minutes in and haven't talked a goddamn thing about wrestling, but... No, but this was going to be about... <laughs> the, the well, we did. Shows. We talked about the pay-per-view. <laughs> well, we didn't have any agenda. I'm sure there was an agenda at some point that did not get discussed whatsoever. <laughs> So I was listening to uh, the guy you were just talking about. He's saying, you know, be different and shit like that. Sometimes those are the best shows, though, where you don't talk about wrestling. Yeah. You just kind of get on yeah. and shoot the shit. Like, you can listen to anybody fucking review Monday Night Raw, but you'd rather hear banter and, and funny shit back and forth. So I, I think, I personally think phone calls is a game changer for us. The fact that we're able to take phone calls and hit, take live calls makes uh, it's, it makes our show a completely different show. So it's exciting in the future for it. Yes. Yeah. You, know what, you, you know what else is cool that he just brought up and, and Rucker did too is that the fact that guys that are doing what they're doing on Sirius XM have to dig all the way into where they're at now because everybody else that they are interviewed are ending up in the Hashtag whatever movements <laughs> is sucks for a lot of shows, man. And that's why it's hard to do guests. And that's why I right. like listening to Marty and Chris go on boot to the face is because I don't get that. Like I, it's, it's, I get to talk about who was drunker or, you know, <laughs> which whiskey's better or drunk how Marty Rutgers, the, how drunk record, Marty how Rutgers, how Rucker's like the four time now Talkamania trivia champ and JP was nowhere to be seen. I came in second. JP did well. I, I did animals. not do well. I did it, it, You know, this is his show, so I'm not going to talk shit about him. He, did, <laughs> he, uh, he was bringing in the rear the most of the night, and then he made a, he made a good comeback for him and could get second place. But, you know. Yeah, love Tom Brady, man. Y'all, y'all be nice to the guy. He ain't gonna have shit. Are you a hot dog, a grandstand, or a showboat, and a prima donna? But you are too. <laughs> <laughs> to. JP sucks on that show. <laughs> it, it was. I think you guys. I think you guys uh, over prepared. And I think like when they asked, like when, he, when the trivia questions were pretty. They were difficult, but if you thought about them for a minute, I think you would have got them. But I think everybody felt like pressure to kick each other's ass. You're like, and froze up. I don't well, know. Yeah, am I wrong? You only, have, you, know, you only have a couple seconds to come up with it all. Right. So you can't, you, you, you can't second guess yourself. You just got to go with what you feel. But it's fun, man. Nico, you got to come on there since you're the the TNA guy that went to every fucking show and goes to the next <laughs> Yeah. Man. 
You would do well on there, Nico, actually. I don't Josh like losing, guys. I'm not big no. losing. Chris, did you – I don't know if you caught it earlier, but I, I admitted exactly why I cannot do trivia is because when uh, WCW and WWF – were doing their thing WWE like I chose sides like I didn't watch WCW I fucking didn't ha I wasn't the guy doing like two TVs at a time I was the guy that was on I was WWF and and that sucks coming for me because I'm a flare sting guy all day long so that's why like when it comes to trivia I can't do it because when it comes to WCW I I that's literally the one of the single most important reasons I got the WWE Network is to go back and watch all of WCW. That's they don't do much uh, WCW trivia on there. You won't really get that until I lose and I host it, and then I get to pick the questions. And I'm doing like all WCW and women's wrestling. They just do mainly WWE stuff. So yeah, but you know, the hell with them. Like, what are we? Uh, what are we talking about? <laughs> Irish whip, not fucking tripping, maybe. <laughs> we got to talk about it. Yeah. We just had to because one JP was on there. So if people want to go back and listen to uh, the questions and see Two if they and can a answer half them. hours. How long was it? Two and a half hours. Oh fuck that! Don't go it do didn't that. Feel like it though. <laughs> it was, uh, <laughs> yeah, you can you can do it at you can listen to it at work in increments. That's what I did. It was a lot of. It didn't feel like two and a half hours, but I was drinking yeah. also. So what do you got going on, Chris? Boot to the face. Got some new T-shirts coming we are, out. Uh, we're almost at episode 100. We, uh, wow. I, I guess I can... Well, shit, I'll tell you guys what we're going to do, what we're planning. You know, we're, we're, we're with Full Press Radio, so we're going to write an article for both of us. We're going to pick uh, number 25 through number 11, the top... Res women wrestlers in the world, and then on number one gets of our picks. So, y'all are the first ones to hear about that. Nice. But, uh, nice. So, that should be fun. Um, like I said, we're going to write articles about it and then tie it in with the with the actual episode that's coming up. We're doing episode 97, I believe, this weekend. And, uh, yeah, looking forward Dude. to it. Man, we haven't recorded in, in a minute because Marty's been on vacation, so... It's been over a week already, and I'm just kind of like ready to start talking shit again. Have you been able to fix the schedule and snafu you were having before? I can't say too much Have more than that. Without... Here just right now. Have you been able to fix? You had a little oh, schedule and uh, snafu. You know, I'm still kind of working on it, and I'm, okay. I'm about ready to give up. But we're trying. No, we're trying. I, we uh, can't say what it is. Yeah, I may, but. I may oh, go to the horse's mouth and say, talking to the horse's ass. <laughs> Dude, <laughs> here's don't a... know how it, I'll do interviews when, and shit like that. So. Yeah, I think it's... the I think the coolest thing is is that you guys found your niche um, that you both are really passionate about and addicted to, like I am. Like you, you and Marty both watched NXT like from its inception. Nico sat there and watched it in the seats, like. Female wrestling is the reason why I watch it now. I mean, the the, the yep. dudes like you know Ziggler and uh, I just don't, I just like I don't know like the match. Um, I'm I'm digging the fact that um, the golden best friends like all of the golden role models or whatever Bailey and Sasha are now are like I just want them to be over as over can be during this COVID. So, I mean. Sell, sell, sell. That's that. Ride that horse. Like, like, go take, make those girls all the possible money that you can right now, but also introduce talent. And I'm, dude, it's so cool that you guys are doing this. And like, it's something that JP and I wanted to do and are passionate about. But like, when we sat down and tried to figure it out, there's no possible way we could do it because we we're so busy. And two, like, we just don't have the time. And Let me ask you something. Where's Candice LeRae on your list? Because I'm a big fan of her. Ooh, yeah. Oh man, she's like 27, 28, 30, 39. She's way down there. I'm not, I'm not a Candice LeRae fan at all. Um, but I haven't, I haven't started my list yet, so I'm not gonna lie to you until she's not up there. I mean, obviously, she's okay. not up there with Trish Stratus and, and those people, but you know, in, in the world, I'm not a big Trish fan either. So, 
I think Trish is okay. I think Trish is really overrated. I think she got a big pass because of how hot she is. And yep. She yep. fucked up a lot in the match. Yep. But, you know, yep. I won't get a lot does. of people to agree with me on all that. That girl hasn't fucked up a lot in matches. No, but Trish is I mean, horrible. No, 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 Trish, Trish is horrible. Is horrible. Trish is I mean, like, so I love Sasha Banks. That girl will be fucking up in matches. Man, I think Sasha's way better than Trish. Oh, yeah. I mean, Sasha, they're all amazing at the point because they've all evolved from the lead of Trish. Yeah. You know, they've all right. taken it. I think Trish was like the first one the next to really level, but at that time. I don't carry herself. Yeah, mainstream that shit, man. She did it. Like so, as as far as Candace goes, I'm not gonna lie to you and tell you I know a lot about her, but from what I do see on NXT, I'm not that big of a fan. But I do know that she was a big intergender in a Joey McRape face. So <laughs> right, he liked um, he liked to have those matches. Yeah. So, I, I'm not gonna lie to you. But oh, I, yeah. All right. So, all right. We're, we're we're in pandemic era right now. Say two months from now, we get big crowds back. You got WWE, you got NXT, you got AEW. Who's the first music that should hit for all three of those brands to get the loudest pop at the first show with crowds back in there? Well, WWE is going to be Roman Reigns because he's been off the show for, you know, three, four months now or so. I mean, everyone else has kind of been watered down. What do you think? Who do you think for WWE, JP? I think you're right. I think it's Roman for WWE. Uh, Shit, AEW. I mean, it has to be Cody. Cody's. The I, so <laughs> who? I, I mean, think for AEW, Jericho. I think you go with somebody new. Hangman Page is my favorite, but I don't see him getting that pop yet. But if you take someone that the crowd singing Jericho's song, yeah, his like stupid song, ago. Judas. Oh my yeah. god, it's so. But Jericho, I mean, Orange, freshly squeezed, has kind of been the guy that everyone's getting. He's getting the push right now. He's their Hulk Hogan, you know. What I mean, he's in the storyline where he's doing really cool shit. He's doing the thumbs down like Triple H was doing back in the day and stuff. So I mean, but what if you took somebody new? If they sign someone new, they sign either a big independent guy. Please don't be or, woo, woo. I'll be like, oh my god, that'd be. Or so they cool. sign, you know, someone from WWE. If it's um, not mere, if it's not Rusev, it's a disappointment. It's a mix between both the y'all's answers. I kind of like both of them. If you take somebody quote unquote new, <laughs> or you take an up and comer like Orange Cassidy, and you put them out there first. And people that are tuning in see them getting that huge reaction. They, they're automatically a star after that. So I, I think Rucker, I think you're right though. At the end of the day, you gotta just have Judas play and and everyone singing it, and that's that's the ratings. That's the demo God King ratings score. You gotta you, you gotta have him come out. You can the song can be playing, but Sammy's the only one that could sing it. Sammy real. can't sing anymore because he said he had he wants to rape Sasha. So he's been off camera for thirty <laughs> days. Right. Sorry about sure. that. Yeah. I don't hey, know about the Roman thing, though. Like, do you, do you agree that you really think that... I miss Roman, dude. Been, I seriously... I mean, I do, too. I'm a, I'm a big Roman guy, but... Like, I miss him. Everybody, like, for example, Sasha and Bailey and Asuka, been working their ass off through this entire thing, and then once you finally get back to the crowd being there, you're just like, all right, we're going to bring Roman back to help. Well, I mean, they've been working this entire thing, and they also are walking around with four belts around their waist. So it's not like they're not being rewarded for these these tough times you know i mean they have but, every gold in the damn women's division right now and the, the hard part to swallow though is oscar's fucked again Kyrie sane's leaving oscar's screwed but I, oscar's over enough and she's such a good wrestler in the ring that she's yeah. going to always be a co top contender dude the green mist. record record do you like the mist are you a fan of the mist no um you, i think for nxt <laughs> i'm just gonna blow right by that one for NXT, I think it should be EO. I think EO should be the first one in front of a live crowd to come up. And her her fucking theme music is a banger. Oh yeah. Oh, with the yeah, her new theme music with the lights. Uh, I get little epilepsy issues going on when it happens when I'm there live, but I always love watching it because it's amazing. You know what's <laughs> fun for me, dude? Is like it, what's fun for me is watching the females go over to stardom. Which they can't do now, but really that feeder program, which is like Tony Storm, uh, all the stuff, all the girls that we're talking about right now, uh, Io Shirai, 
and Kyrie saying Oscar, like all of this through stardom, like that's I'm 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 excited for these articles. Like Rucker, when you guys do this, are you writing one and then, and then is Marty doing one separate from yours, and then you guys are going to publish yours like yeah, at the same we're both, time? We're both doing our top twenty-five together, and we're both doing twenty-five through eleven articles of our own, and then on the one hundredth episode, we'll do our top ten separately. So I don't know who he's picking; he doesn't know who I'm picking. And it's current wrestlers also; it's not like all time. There's so much talent in NXT, especially right now, and Impact. Obviously, they got Virtuoso and and Jordan Grace and all them people. But like NXT alone's got, I mean, yeah. you know, Candice LeRae, Rhea Ripley, Io Shirai. I mean, they just lost Bianca, but they have, I mean, Dakota Kai. They got Tegan Knox. They got so many women wrestlers that can really go, and are right. just now starting to get their potential. Has Impact done anything with well, Alicia Edwards? Yeah, not enough. She is so. Let me tell you, because I've seen she's another one that I've seen from the get go. She is so fucking good in the ring, and she's just small. She's very short, um, but she is so good in the ring. It's just like Ray Star Five. It's like it's it's size, man. If you are too small, sometimes you can't post up. It's like right. remember when Jordan Grace when we talked to Jordan and she talked about wrestling against uh, Brian Cage and how. Yeah difficult it was not just like muscles weight whatever she was fine it was this it was the height was the problem and to be able to hold that you know he's all oiled up his little slimy ass (laughs) right stupid (laughs) ftw belt lamb chop that's a great i love that belt though get out of here stupid ass belt here you take it back because it's not hanging on your wall Okay, you let's never buy that piece of shit let's get rucker over one more time and then can we just in in this show yeah, we're yeah. up to a minute in. It's going to take a lot to put Rucker, Rucker over. Rucker, put yourself over. Uh, find us at Boot to the Face on Twitter, on iTunes, iHeart, Spotify, full press coverage, pretty much anywhere you listen to podcasts, you can find Boot to the Face. That's with the number two. And, uh, yeah, we'll be, like I said, coming up on episode number 100. And we are definitely listeners of the Irish Whip, so check <laughs> Thank you so much, man. Thanks for calling in. We appreciate yeah, congrats it. Congrats on 100, man. Awesome. 100, dude. Congrats. I'll, awesome. I'll sip some Crown Royal for that. I'll suck my balls, JP. <laughs> no. uh, I would say the calls are a success, although they took up the entire show. But like he said, that's dude. sometimes that's the best shows. I enjoyed right. the show a lot. Yeah, if we uh, had, so, you know, in the future, guys, just so you know, like, if we have a guest, we're probably not going to take calls. No. If we have some kind of format, we're going to have a certain time frame, and we'll tell you what it is probably in the beginning of the show where we'll, we'll take calls. I don't necessarily say that we won't take calls. We, we could probably take calls, but they will be Very screened. Highly, yeah. They'll be screened before, and Nico will be in control of it if they come on. Like we'll have we'll have a quad screen going. Like that's well, just and we need to make the calls, and we can talk off air. But we need to make the calls more. I mean, the one guy was on for forty minutes, so like we can't have callers call again for forty minutes because we lose track of our own show. Listen to the see. That's why we have him. He keeps yeah, us on Nico. Track, Nico you know? watches the time. Nico's the one that keeps us on point. <laughs> <laughs> like me and you, both of us will just fucking go scatter here and there. And Nico's like, guys, this. Here you yeah. go. Here's our. Like, Nico's got the focus. piece of paper written down with like. <laughs> Nico's got written down on the piece of paper from minute one to minute fifteen and a half. I'd say we end with some Hulk Hogan uh, music. What do you think? Here, here's what I want everybody to do. If you actually come back and watch this, I want somebody to tweet out us at Three Irish Boys hashtag Street Profits for how many times I put this thing in front of the screen, and I think I'm going to give away one of my action figures. That being said, we'll end the end the show with a little Hulk Hogan rap music. Oh god. The Irish whip, baby. Wow. The Irish whip. Checking out the action, brother. Putting on some
Not some shitty. How old is this? Is this new? What do you think? 19. Is this <laughs> when he was doing eight. that the boat movie or whatever it was by Universal, the whole WCW Thunder, thing? Thunder in Paradise. Remember, in Paradise. When, remember when right. Macho Man came out with the diss track? Oh, yeah, dig it. There's, right, a macho man, there's a Macho <laughs> Man rap song where he's dissing Hogan. Hey guys, uh, we'll thanks it, for listening. I'll have, it, I'll have it available next week for, for listening. Yeah. To the <laughs> yeah. Hey, thanks for listening. Uh, we'll see you next Tuesday. Fuck Maybe. <laughs>